What is going on guys, Coach Joe here at the Lion's Den. In this video, I'm just gonna be kind of doing a video over the last pull day that I have. So right now when it comes to my training, I'm in a massing phase, about 275, and I started that around 260. So, you know, my weight's steadily increasing. Right now I kind of hit a little bit of a plateau. My goal is to try to push to around 285. Uh, in hopes that doing a bodybuilding show, when I cut down, I've added a lot of great, solid uh, muscle. Obviously, there is fat that comes with it. We'll talk more about massing in another video, uh, kind of what to expect, should you mass, how to do it, etc., stuff like that. Um, but it's just giving me a pretty good, solid structure and goal uh, that I want to hit as I'm going through this massing phase. When it comes to programming right now, uh, I'm actually doing a push-pull leg split. So it's a push-pull leg twice per week. So six sessions per week, each session for uh, each of those muscle groups is gonna be a little bit different. And the exercise I use are gonna be a little bit different. So I'm gonna kind of talk you through what I'm doing, the technical aspects of it, my thought process, uh, and kind of where this thing is gonna head. Let's kind of jump right to it on this pull day. So I have a good training group right now. Uh, I'm training with one of my college athletes who's home on break. He's actually done some of these videos, his name's Kobe. He's a phenomenal guy, just a hungry beast. I also have my buddy Dan, who's been a friend of mine for a while, and uh, it's kind of cool because he's never really been on a solid structure program, so I get to kind of teach him throughout these sessions. So I figured why not be able to communicate with you guys the things I'm telling him and, and for you guys to see it firsthand. So uh, like I said, we're doing pull day twice per week. Uh, this is my first pull day, uh, and right now we're starting at three sets uh, per exercise and what you're seeing. The week before that I was only doing two sets. So just really trying to, to get proper progressive overload uh, and, and expose my body to stress over time. And by the time this is done, I'll probably do, be doing five to six sets uh, towards the end of this mesocycle. So we're looking about a five, five week uh, meso with a, a week six kind of being like a deload essentially. Start with barbell row. Um, when we're doing these barbell rows, I really like to keep them pretty strict. I try to limit my body English. In the past, I used to do rows of 315 plus, maybe 365 at one point. Uh, but if I watch those videos from the past, I'm using a ton of English, uh, our body English, I'm kind of jerking the bar. And, and although it is working those muscles, it's not being as efficient as possible, especially with hypertrophy training of targeting the proper muscle groups. So when we're doing these barbell rows, uh, just a couple of basic pointers is when it comes to grip, I, I tell you, tend to think of like a close grip on the bench press is where I set up and then go about a fist width uh, from that. Um, when I'm doing these, I'm really focusing on lengthening my arms as much as possible and almost resetting the bar on the ground every single time. I'm working on driving my elbows back as far as I can and making contact with my body each time. It's giving me tactile feedback that every single rep is the same because if I'm throwing a lot of body English in there, I'm raising uh, my torso, and then uh, I'm just using a ton of momentum, it's really hard to gauge if I'm getting stronger or not, because hypothetically what I could do is just start using body English and getting cheat reps essentially, uh, but then one, it's increasing systemic fatigue, and two, it's making me hard, or making it harder for me to gauge, making me hard. <laughs> it's definitely not making me hard, but it's making it harder uh, for me to, to really see the, the gains or the progress and how many reps I'm getting with a certain amount of weight. So I really like to kind of just uh, lengthen those arms, get, get in a nice set uh, hinged position and focus on, on keeping that bar uh, close to my body, basically dragging my elbows backwards across, uh, behind my body and just trying to get as, as full range of motion as possible and also uh, controlling the eccentric as best as possible. Uh, so that's kind of it with the barbell rows. We did three sets of uh, eight to 10 reps here. I like starting off this movement because it kind of gets the back really fired up. It's more of a compound movement per se. And that helps me uh, later on when I get into more isolation work. The second movement we decided to do is gonna be a lat pull down. Now I have different lat pull down attachments. Some are gonna be closer grip, some are wider grip. I use the mag attachments or the mag grips, uh, which I feel like tax the forearms a little bit more. So I use those later in the week. Uh, but for this, just a typical regular lat pull down bar. Uh, you're more than welcome to use straps if you want. Since I'm newer in this programming block, I, I'm actually not using my straps just yet because I, I kind of want to just build my work capacity back, build my grip strength back a little bit. But do know that 
when you use straps, it does take away some of the emphasis on your grip. So if grip is a limiting factor and you wanna be able to push more weight, straps are gonna be a great alternative to throw in there uh, so that you can focus way more on using your back uh, than fatiguing your forearms. But the weight is a little bit light for me now, so I don't necessarily have to worry about that issue. Now when doing lat pull downs, a couple things to think about is not leaning too far back. So I try to keep my pull pretty vertical uh, and, and I wanna make contact with my sternum every single time I pull the bar down. All right, so they're just nice controlled reps. Uh, and then one of my biggest tips is something I liked, and I think I heard it actually from Charlie from RP Strength, was think about flexing your triceps at the top when you're fully extended up. Uh, that just really helps get that full range of motion uh, because typically what you'll see people do is they don't let their arms lengthen all the way to the top and it shortens the range of motion and potential gains that we could be making, okay? So uh, we're doing three sets. For this one, it's 12 to 15 reps. We're looking at you know two to three reps in reserve here and uh, we'll be able to build off of that over time. So usually my last set, I'm gonna end around that 12 to 13 rep range and I'm keeping track of all my reps so that over time I'm looking to shoot for more reps with a certain weight before I increase that weight, knowing that I'm getting stronger uh, with that specific variation. After that, we do dumbbell rows. I really like doing dumbbell rows uh, as the, I'm basically pre-fatigued so I get a better mind-muscle connection. And one of the biggest things here with this row uh, that I'm focusing on is not uh, basically rotating and opening up my chest when I'm doing them, like almost like starting a lawnmower. And sometimes I pe see people do that. And I'm also focusing on driving my elbow back towards my hip. A lot of people just tend to pull straight up and they end up throwing their shoulder more into that movement when we really wanna work the back and the lats. So I think if you kinda of arc your elbow back towards your hip, you're gonna get a better mind-muscle connection, you're gonna get more stimulus to the lat that way, plus your pre-fatigue, so you're gonna feel it a lot more. You're not gonna be able to go as heavy and it kinda of limits the total fatigue that you're putting on your body uh, because you've already done a lot of work on the lats prior. So those are the three movements I primarily do for my back on my pull day. I found that I get a really good stimulus if I do them correctly and I focus on my technique. Uh, in the past, maybe I've done you know five to six back variations and really that just ended up turning into jump volume essentially. Uh, so with this, I really get to focus on those three variations, pushing the weight properly, developing a good mind-muscle connection, focus on that technique and get a great stimulus and, a, and a, just a phenomenal pump uh, when it comes to uh, the back. The last two variations I do are gonna be bicep specific exercises. My biceps definitely need to grow. Uh, from doing all the pressing I've done over the years and a lot of tricep isolation work, I have very big strong triceps, but my biceps are not proportional. So I'm trying to get my biceps to be proportional or bigger than they already are, uh, just for sake of looking good on stage and just building the hypertrophy of the bicep. So I really like doing a straight bar cable curl. So we'll do the cable curls on the cable machine once again focusing on full range of motion, controlling that eccentric, uh, and just really trying to uh, get, get a really good contraction on the way up. Uh, what I see people doing often mistake-wise, they don't open up their biceps all the way at the bottom. They kind of have uh, that little elbow bend. So I like to open up all the way at the bottom, and I like to pull almost all the way up towards my forehead, per se. Uh, so really just trying to utilize that bicep muscle as much as possible. I do find that I get a pretty good bicep pump from doing these right now. Although what I may end up doing uh, as the, the program goes on is throw in biceps in the beginning or biceps as a second session so that I can isolate them a little bit more and push them a little bit harder. But for right now, where they're at in my training, they're getting the job done. I'm still getting a pretty good stimulus. Uh, after that, since I fatigued my biceps up with the cable curl, I'm just gonna do alternating bicep curls. All right, same thing with these. I wanna make sure that I let my arms hang all the way down at the bottom and I wanna make sure that I'm squeezing with a little bit of uh, shoulder elevation up top uh, just to complete that range of motion. So nice, smooth, controlled, eccentric, and then just squeezing up as hard as I can. Uh, so both for the cable curl and the bicep curl, we're doing three sets, 12 to 15 reps, and that will increase over time as we're trying to you know, stimulate the back and the biceps as much as possible. So there you guys have it. That's just a hot take on my back day. Now this is separate and different than my second back day in the week and I'll make sure to make a video on that. As you can see the different variations I use and how I structure that. Um, but what I found for most of my lifts is that I'm able to train them uh, twice per week. So there you guys have it. There is my pool day. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you guys think this programming looks cool, uh, I always recommend you guys go check out the, the app. So. Uh, we'll put the link down below and you guys can subscribe. There's a ton of hypertrophy programs, anywhere from three to six days. 
the, you know, helps work with your schedule or busy life that you have, uh, and gets you results. You know, we have about 350 people on the app right now. They're absolutely loving it. Uh, we have our Discord channel, all sorts of goodies. Uh, on top of that, if you guys are interested in learning how to program, I'm doing a programming 101 course here at the Den in April. Uh, so that's going to just answer all your questions uh, for beginners or people who want to coach other people on how to even set up a program, different programming philosophy strategies, terminology, and, and just a course is going to set you up for success uh, when it comes to programming. So that's also on zastrength.net. Feel free to check that out. Uh, we'd love to have you. I'd love to talk with you and answer any specific questions at that seminar. Uh, so make sure you sign up. I only put 20 spots available so I can make sure it's a very unique and intimate experience for anybody who's looking to increase their knowledge when it comes to programming or coaching others uh, for strength or hypertrophy. That's all we got, guys. Hopefully you like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Stay a lean, mean, strength machine. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.